Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning, is to me the most dull film in the series. Like, it's pretty boring. It's somehow more boringer than boringer. I just made a border, boringer. It's more boring than the first one for some reason. I, I just don't know how. They were trying to cash in on the success of the previous movies, and I don't know, man. This one just didn't do it for me. It went back, honestly. If you ask me, this movie went back to how boring and dull the first couple were about. You're not alone. Friday the 13th, part 5, a new beginning. Corey Feldman's scenes were shot in the backyard of his neighbor's house. So yeah, Corey Feldman, I think, I'm sure he was busy with the Goonies around this time. So he had like maybe one scene. Ted Wright was stated in interviews he was offered the opportunity to reprise his role in the sequel. But turning out and later stated that he regretted that decision. I mean, you don't get to play Jason more than like once, you know, except for Kane Otter, you know. So wait, is this, I should look up how many times Ted Wright, uh, is it just third one? If it is, that sucks. He is big in, you know, media, I guess. There was originally a three minute long sex scene but the mpaa forced him to cut it out to 10 seconds deborah Voorhees, who lost teaching jobs at, later in life when schools discover her sex scene of the film so yeah so this is the, the most like nude film combined the first four combined with all of this nudity this one has the most nudity mainly because the director was a, was a soft core porn director so there's quite a bit of nudity it's probably like, the most nudity but the actress in the sex scene her real name is deborah Voorhees. Voorhees this is a real last name but you know she did lose his jobs because they find out and she was nude whether there's a question she lose a job for doing you know another job just because you're new to one scene i don't know that's a debate but it sucks you know where she just kind of lost the job because of his new sex scene Malene kinnaman thinks her favorite scenes in the film were the ones where she was wearing the wet see-through t-shirt she thought she didn't look good in the film until they turned the sprinklers on see-through wet t-shirts like the teacher what a, the blonde teacher character and the, the final act there's just like rain and water everywhere and her t-shirt is see-through and you see her her nipples it's kind of like okay the hell they kind of do here i mean i get it director is a soft corn porn director but you know i just thought it was interesting yeah it says here core film will start to reprise the robot shot goonies at the same time oh, what the, i didn't know this without counting the laughing or yelling the tommy jarvis character only says 24 words throughout the entire film i did not know that so the actor playing this new tommy is oh god i forgot his name bunch of later on he's like fit and cut a bit buff in this movie and he knows like jujitsu and kung fu but the funny thing about that whenever it comes to jason he freaks out because he he saw his trauma they're continuing that trauma storyline anytime jason gets close he freaks the fuck out and he doesn't know how to do his moves anymore i just thought that was funny the scripts of the film that made tommy seem to be the suspect or more of a suspect later on uh that would have been an interesting take right he's been a, a psychotic you know war thing for who knows how many years like 10 years he looks at 10 years older in this one than he did yet, uh, last movie so instead they they transfer him to a camp psychotic thing because it needs to be in a camp because friday 13th why the hell not whatever camp would accept like psychiatric you know stuff like this nobody but it's a friday film so they gotta use that yeah not only tommy there's like a couple other people over there imply in this movie that they're the killer and they're away for a bit uh, everyone's wondering like when they first watch this movie how is jason back what kind of bs were they gonna bring jason back please tell us the audience and they, they find a different way so around the 35 minute mark the moment when lana rebecca wood looks in the mirror bears her breast and cries showtime was not in the original script what i recently seen bob fawcett's all that jazz 1979 movie Joe Gideon, Roy Schneider does something similar. Judo director Danny Steinman about her idea, and he loved it. So this movie is grotesque. That's just kind of it was added there when Lana, she's some waitress diner. She goes into the bathroom waiting for a boyfriend who gets killed by this Jason, and she just opens up her t-shirts like shows her breasts like Showtime, and that was just a moment. I remember thinking, okay, what was that there for? Just kind of more nudity, I guess. But you know, it was like okay, I don't think I needed that. Timeline-wise, this film takes place in 1989, five years later, right? Because was in 1984 so this is i guess it's doing it five years later i guess i don't know but it is five years later damn they really wanted uh amy still back i mean i get why she's a very memorable character she has a psychology degree but they wanted her back in this one as well due to the trauma damn yeah there's a script for a new beginning basic story for her to come back i mean i, I get it fans love her too you know i like her too but i mean we have tarmy jarvis so i don't know but apparently people behind executives and all the producers and fans themselves wanted amy still to come back as jenny but either they didn't want to or she was busy with other projects basically sort of the so-called secret name was called repetition again used by david bowie song as a previous stated in a, another friday video they used david bowie songs as secret names or secret film names darcy del Mas was really hired for the role of tina but she was fired after refusing to perform the nude scenes required for the role other reports claim she was allegedly backed out of the project when director danny steinman requests that she take her shirt off and show her breasts during the audition del Mas would appear in the next movie part six jason lives but also refused to appear topless even though she said she had no issue with nudity. Uh, 
uh, conflicting reports. I'm sure. So since since the director is porn director, right? You know, there's bound to be nudity in this movie, and if you know, actor doesn't feel comfortable doing it, just you know, kind of back out. But apparently, again, these are a lot of like he said, she said things. Like Danny wanted her to take her top off. It sounds like a slippery slope situation. But yeah, I just thought that was okay. So who's telling the truth here? Come on, stop that goddamn truth, please. Oh, she, apparently in Turkey, this film and the fourth film were released at the same time, so audiences could watch both films back to back. Even posters for both movies were to play next to each other. It's cool, a double feature for tur people who live in Turkey. Watch the fourth final and then the sequel. Like, it's like, hey, let's watch the final chapter. Oh, hey, there's a new one, you know? It's like, but I thought this was the final one, you know? It's, I just thought it was funny. But they probably didn't give a fuck. They were like, we more Friday, despite there being a final in one of the move on. So, this is pretty sad news. Director Danny was lined up to direct five movies, but they all fell through. He was involved in a horrible bicycle accident that almost killed him not long after Part 5 was released and spent years trying to recover and never returned to filmmaking despite many attempts. Yeah, that sucks. But, uh, don't wish, you know, ill will on anyone. So, according to Ron Slowen or Slogan, the actress who did nudity got embarrassed during the premiere screening. You can see that, you know, you're putting yourself out there for you to see your junk and your breasts, and you may might not be comfortable doing that you are comfortable doing it on screen like behind the scenes when you're shooting but trying to go out there and be like hey i did this new scene you know i get it and some some people like their privacy very much and everyone's gonna respect that you know so apparently this movie had more violent deaths i would argue that this obviously has a lot more nudity than previous more deaths the deaths in this movie suck as for one or two they were just fucked by the mpaa they did kind of get involved in this they, it, it held back the kills it was such a boring film okay at least there will be good kills right no nope. kills are, are sadly not gonna be here sadly which sucks so when the film was released it did reasonably well financially but critically it was just not handled well and ultimately marked first of the very successful lower grossing chain of sequels yeah i don't think this is a lower grossing film but it's definitely i mean i guess audience could tell this is kind of boring and milking the series so okay we don't need another one so they just it was a sign of like stop making the series even though they just continued to did it basically so the last one here it says only cast members who knew the killer was roy the paramedic however when it came time to film the big reveal they all knew the twist ending was horrible in fact they filmed Rose death scene twice no one believed the audience would be able just to see the unmasked man and instantly remember him as the paramedic Cats out of the bag. The killer for this movie is somehow, or not somehow, I think supposed to remember this paramedic character who it's clearly implied that he's a killer. We see shots him looking at camera, it fizzles out. He answered questions he doesn't get asked about, like, you talking to me, officer, like stuff like that. He's clearly the killer, but like, like, as to why he's the killer, because his son, Fat Joey, <laughs> Fat Joey, I'm calling him Fat Joey, dies because one of the kids kill him for over fucking chocolate, by the way. And because of that, it sparks something in him. He wants to start killing people now because he hates people. <sighs> I don't know. Changing this happened with. With, like Halloween as well, they're trying to change like copycat killer. Like doing a, a copycat killer with an established sort of well-known character like Jason is not a good idea. I appreciate the different take, right? They're trying to do something different, but overall the story and everything was the same. There were only a couple of good kills, and it was just dull because of that. Like they said, it was a horrible twist. Who the hell would remember this this character? You know who's being implied? Like no one. Everyone just assume okay, they're gonna bring back Jason somehow, right? They're not gonna like drag this out for on and on and on, right? But nope, they kind of dragged it out, and it's kind of like okay. You know, it is what it is. Actually, you know what? That wasn't the last one. This is the last one. The hockey mask in the film mark has blue markings on it instead of red ones, foreshadowing that the real killer isn't Jason at all. No one, no one would ever notice that. Honestly, everyone, this is me assuming shit back in 1985, all right? Most people thought, okay, Jason's gonna come back somehow, right? He's gonna be some supernatural being. Nah, man. Is this this crazy father this person? Like, I don't know. Everyone, I certainly thought it was going to be Jace because they never explained the way he came back in two. So why explain it now? But again, appreciate the different take. Let's get on with the film. It opens up. I don't re remember how it opens up. Hold on. I I'll just freak out. What I need to know is that I actually like this character. And I laughed a bit when he actually got killed because it came out of nowhere, honestly, where this crazy guy gets mad at him for offering him chocolate. He's like, fuck you. You're going to pay for this for my chocolate. He gets chocolate over and it just acts in his back and he dies for it he was like oh shit okay and that that guy who axed him is like one of the few uh, suspects that was implied that he was the killer but he went to jail in prison paramedic guy comes in he's useless no one remembers him the only other character i remember is trish with the whole see-through shirt the little boy who screams like a girl near the end and that dancing girl the robot girl who's dancing her kills her her death by the way is just a pillow with like red liquid so that was a lame death she starts dancing like a robot i liked her but again characters are 
okay. I like Tarmir in this movie. He's a fucking kung fu master. But again, when it comes to Jason, he freaks the fuck out. And Tarmir was also one of these suspected like suspects. Because for a portion of the movie near the end, he was gone. It was made to think audiences like, oh, he, maybe he's a killer, but he wasn't. So that's why he was. I was like, why is he gone for so long? We want to make it feel like you know, throughout this whole time, he went crazy and maybe he was a killer, but he's not. What else? Oh, there's that one moment in the final act where the little black boy comes out the fucking tractor and runs over Roy. That shit was cool. I'm really thinking like the little black boy's name, but let's go. Tractor boy. I'm calling him tractor kid. Tra boy that was awesome and then they have the final confrontation with trish black boy I, i'm sorry i'm forgetting the little boy name the movie was so forgettable but him and tommy face roy jason like they do defeat him but it, it was just kind of okay just get over this basically because at this point it was kind of like is this jason or not and it kind of wasn't because he had a human skin so it was like, this isn't jason this is a copycat killer right and then they push him to a bunch of pitchforks kills and the mask comes off it's roy and it, it's whatever it's kind of disappointing too after the the highs highs the forefront and come to this one i'm thinking okay maybe this one isn't as bad and it isn't i think i would rate this if i didn't rewatch this rate this super low when i rank these but rewatching it it's actually like okay and watchable and somewhat entertaining there's the other one that i kind of don't like but you know this is you know watchable but it's still very dull and boring it, you know they went that copycat killer route again i appreciate that but roy your boy roy honestly i, I wish they would have pulled the trigger and said that it was tommy who's the killer i would have liked that route but you know everyone knows roy now roy the paramedic killer and then the end I guess it's kind of the same for the forefront where Court, I was about to say Court Feldman, where Tommy, this actor playing who's played Tommy, is implied that he's like gonna kill. So he has the mask on when Trish comes in, he has holding a knife next to him, and it's like it ends with a shot of him holding a knife. And it goes to end credits again, implying the fact that he may be evil, he may be a killer, even though we all know he is no goddamn killer. That's a very dull, it's not bad, right? There is yet to be a bad movie in this series, yet. Again, yet. But yeah, this movie overall, Friday the 13th, part 5 a new beginning is is okay it's dull and boring and isn't all that interesting at all mainly because the mpa messed with the kills honestly this film and a couple other films the mpa just kind of came in was like no 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 it's like oh shit okay then and they have to you know follow the rules or else they're gonna get sued for money and all that stuff and, you know that sucks next is friday the 13th part 6 jason lives